For the past year, I've been secretly working on a project that we finally released last week. That's right, with some friend, we released a hand-tracking mixed-rated detective game on the MetaQuest Store. In this game, you enter a crime scene, collect clue and analyze them in your own room, and then link the clue to a suspect to make them confess. Now, releasing the game was an epic adventure, which I just shared every detail on my latest video on the main channel, Vellum. Now, in this video, I talked about designing the game using hand-tracking motion capture and of course releasing the game so if you haven't watched it go pause this video and go watch it immediately the link will be in the description but you already know that here on Vellum tutorials we like to get technical so in this video that you are watching right now we are going to have a deeper look at what a unity project of a release mix rated game looks like and I'm going to share with you the specific things that help us finish the game and of course that you should also use for your own project. Oh and by the way I will leave in the description a link if you'd like to buy the game or play the free demo that we made a while ago. Okay so here it is, we are inside our Unity project in the starting menu of our game. You might already recognize some familiar things, for example here our detective VR camera rig which is our player prefab that is built on top of the meta uh, all-in-one SDK. But before telling you about all the things that we did good, I want to be super honest with you and first share what went bad. We definitely had some issue designing the game and with the motion capture, but regarding the Unity project, just a simple look at the project window might give you an idea. It is a mess. We have random folder name, some scripts are at the root, the name of all assets are not the same, and so on. It is a total nightmare and all of this because we were too focused on improving our game, we underestimated the importance of having a good Unity structure, which meant that finding assets was super hard, loading the Unity project took a lot of time, we had issue with the size of our APK because it included something that we did not use and sometimes in our scene we had different material with the same texture which was super bad for optimization. So you watching this video don't make the same mistake as we did and please share a naming convention and define a project structure to all members of your project. There are some really good guide on the best practices that you can do online which you can find. Okay so to work on the game we were a team of Four people, two dev, one art, and one game designer. If you have worked on a Unity project with a team, the next tip might not be a big surprise for you, but to make everybody work efficiently on the project, we use managing tools. For example, we use GitHub to allow everybody on the team to share their update on the project easily. Version control is crucial in game development even if you are alone. So that's another big lesson. And look at how satisfying it is to see all the little updates that we made on the project. Then we use Jira. You can see the Jira that we use, it tracks the progress of our application. We created tickets for each thing that we wanted to implement. And at the start of each week, we planned which ticket we wanted to focus and who should work on them. Another important thing that I learned was the use of prefab. If I select another scene, for example, like this scene that we use for Mixed Reality, as you can see, almost everything is divided into certain prefab. Not only prefab are very good in Unity in terms of asset management, but they are also good when working with multiple people. Because two people working on the same scene can create conflict, using prefab means that people can directly add their change to the prefab and not to the scene, which also automatically helps you to divide the application into multiple core components Okay, so if you look at our project window, you can see all the different scenes we have in the game. Dividing the game into scenes was very important also to make the game super optimized. Another thing like this is that because we're aiming at a realistic visual, we had to do a lot of optimization, for example, with the lighting as well. Now, I will not have enough time here to talk about how we were able to optimize the game, but I will probably make a big video about VR optimization very soon, so make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss it. Okay, now I want to talk about a really cool thing that I feel is super underestimated in Unity, and it is the timeline. Now, as you can see, we use timeline to control and synchronize the character animation in our scene, but more than that, we also use timeline to make the player progress. Let me show you what I mean by that by opening our tutorial scene. Okay, so as you can see, we use a timeline to control everything that is shown on the tutorial. But the real secret are these timeline stoppers that you can see right here. These timeline stopper will be activated at some point and when activated they will stop the timeline and wait for an interaction to be done. 
For example, in our case, we waited for the player to start button, grab glasses, put the glasses on his head, and so on. This is really big because using timeline is not only super easy, it lets you jump to any point in the timeline to see what's happening and easily debug something that could happen at a specific moment. Now, if you want a tutorial on how to do this, I've actually previously talked about this exact technique and share all of the script in this video. Okay, for our next trick, maybe you have probably already heard about scriptable object. Scriptable object are script that does not need to sit on game object in your scene, and this change everything. Not only scriptable objects are more optimized, but they make it so much easier to handle the data of your game. As you can see, in our game, we use scriptable object to add data on all of the audio, add data on all objects the player could scan, add data on all of our environment, and also on our suspect, and for example, if you want to edit multiple elements at once with scriptable object, it is easy to do. You can just go in the project window and select all the elements you want to change, which would be so much more complicated to do with some game object in the scene. Another cool thing is that it meant that because the data is outside of the game object of our game, it allows you to modify the data of the game without creating conflict with somebody working on a scene, which is awesome. But the most important part is that because we had the total control over the data of our game in one place, we could easily create tools to automatically set the data to a certain value. For example, here I made a root scriptable object, which will contain a reference to all the other scriptable objects that can unlock all clues that are in certain scene with this button, which is a huge time saver for a game that can last six hours when you want to debug a certain element at a certain point in the story. So yes, moral of the story is use scriptable object. Okay, so at this point, we had learned a few important things we did for making our game work, but something I definitely didn't expect was the complexity to translate translate a game. We not only needed to translate all the written text in the game, but also create subtitles. But we found a really good solution to make it work. So how did we did it? The first part was gathering all the text and voice in our game. For text, it's easy. I wrote down a little script to write all text in an Excel file. But for audio, we had to turn all audio of our game into text using audio to text converter. Once we had gathered all the languages in our game in an Excel file, we used Google Translate to automatically translate these texts for all languages that we wanted to support. At the end, the file looks like this, which is completely insane. And at this point, once we had all of the text translated, we had to go the other way and use it to populate our Unity project. So I exported these Excel files in CSV, and then I made a script that will, for each audio, search for their corresponding name in the file and populate their translation automatically. To give you an example, as you can see here, I have a file path that will point to where my file containing all the translation is. Then I have a certain timeline that I want to translate. And if I click on the populate timeline button, ta-da! as you can see, it will create a track on my timeline that will add for everything the character will say a little clip which contain their traduction that can be used by the subtitle system depending on the languages that you want. It is super cool. And there you go, this sums up the behind the scene of our mixed reality game. I hope that you enjoy watching this video, which is really different to what I really post, but I hope that you enjoy it anyway. To sums up, we learned that it's very important to structure your project with folder, prefab, scene and scriptable object. But the most important lesson for me is the different takes to turn a simple idea into a full game. And I think our language system to translate is a good example of this. I hope that you enjoyed this overview of the project. A big shout out to my new Patreon. Their name will appear on the screen right now. And if like them, you want to support the channel and get access to exclusive content and the source code of my tutorials, join us. The link is in the description. Now, thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.